Knowing your torque wrenches are accurate is the desire of anyone who's using a torque wrench. However, understanding the final torque accuracy of your torque wrench is paramount to delivering the proper expected torque value. In this video, let's take a look at the click wrench versus the cam wrench and how the final torque accuracies look in comparison to each other. Now, there are a number of different styles of torque wrenches that are available. We have the click wrench, uh, beam wrenches, uh, there are electronic wrenches. We also have breakover style wrenches as well. But in this video, let's take a look at the click wrench. Now, the click wrench is by far the most popular wrench used in the world today. One, they are readily available. Two, they're fairly inexpensive. And three, they are adjustable. Now let's take a look at how most click wrenches work. Inside the wrench, we have our spring, we have the uh, head mechanism, and then we also have uh, what is known as a pivot block. Now the pivot block, uh, basically what happens is as the wrench is being used and the spring is being compressed, at a certain moment when the desired torque is achieved, the pivot block will pivot and that pivot is what causes our click. And this is the signal that torque has been achieved. The operator can most often hear the click and feel the click. Now, the only thing that it does not do, it does not prevent the operator from adding any type of additional torque to the application as the operator can continue to pull on the wrench after the pivot block has pivoted. So in most cases, there is only about three degrees of deflection that the operator has until they are adding additional torque. So after the click, the operator must release the wrench to help from any type of over torquing to occur. Another thing to keep in mind is because our pivot block is on the inside of the wrench, this becomes our fulcrum point for our torque delivery. So if the operator holds the tool or uses it in any other place than the handle that's designed to be used, it's going to affect the torque output. So if the hand is moved up onto the wrench, that is going to provide a different result as well as if an extension is added onto the wrench as well. So the click style wrench would be considered a length dependent style of wrench. Here's an animation that demonstrates how over torque can easily happen with a click style wrench. Again, if the operator does not stop pulling on the wrench once the wrench has signaled by the click, then over torque has occurred. This is what it looks like in a graph form with a torque over time curve. So as the wrench is being pulled, we hit our target torque, the wrench will deflect, and then if the operator continues to pull, we see additional over torque that happens. Now let's take a look at the cam style wrench and how it functions to help prevent this type of over torque. Now you may notice on this tool that there is not a scale. That is because the tool is set internally and, and then is secured with an end cap. So this helps prevent the operator from any type of tampering or accidental change of the torque value that is desired. So let's take a look at how the cam wrench works with this simple animation. So we have our cam mechanism, we have our follower and our spring. As the cam is rotated, the follower compresses the spring and when torque is achieved, the cam will simply slip and the follower then moves into the next cam lobe. And so as many times as we would like to try to use the tool on an application, we will never exceed the torque value that has been set on the wrench thus preventing any type of over torquing. In addition, because our fulcrum point on this particular tool is at the end of the tool, we can hold the tool anywhere up and down the handle and we are always going to receive the same torque values. So if we look at the operation in graph form for the cam over style tool, you can see that we'll always run up to the target torque, then the wrench will slip, we can run back up to the target torque, the wrench will slip and so on. So we never have the opportunity to introduce any type of over torquing to the application. Here's a quick video clip to demonstrate 
the difference between the click wrench and the cam over wrench. So here we have our torque sensor and our PTT torque analyzer. And we're using this in our first peak mode, which shows us the torque at the click and it also shows us any final or over torque that is achieved in the operation. So you can see that we are having a consistent click torque at around 30 Newton meters, but we are also seeing a consistent amount of over torque at 41 to 40 Newton meters. Now we'll leave the analyzer still in the first peak mode and with our cam over tool, you will see that every time the wrench will cam, and this wrench is set to about 31 Newton meters, we will always be achieving around that torque value and never do we see any type of over torque. Now to look at the comparison between the two, first you'll see the cam over wrench is non-operator dependent, meaning it doesn't matter who pulls on the wrench, when it cams, we're going to always receive the same torque values. Cam over tool is also non-length dependent, meaning we can hold it anywhere on the handle and the output is going to be the same. It also prevents any type of over torquing, it is a preset tool and tamper proof. For information on the cam over tools or any of the mounts products, please visit us at mountstorque.com.